Hey everyone, uh, good morning. Once again, uh, thanks for joining in. Welcome uh, for having us. Thanks for joining. All right, guys, let's, uh, let's pray and we'll get started. All right. Father, we submit this time into your hands. <coughs> Lord, come and have your way. Jesus, even as we learn about ministry and worship ministry, God, I pray that you will continue to pour out your wisdom, your knowledge, your understanding, your insight uh, over us, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Awesome. Okay, I hope you all are doing well. Uh, right, uh, today is uh, an exciting class, uh, a more hands-on, practical, more practical, not hands-on uh, class uh, with Sim. So uh, we look at uh, chapter six uh, in your notes, in your content. It's all about, today is going to be about music and technology. Uh, worship and uh, sound and technology used in worship ministry and the, in the importance uh, of it right um, so you can follow along uh, in your notes but I'll also share my screen um, um, to oops sorry All right, here we go, here we go. Okay, all right. Great. Um, so I'm sure uh, you can all see the image. Uh, but what I'd like to do is, uh, is just before we go ahead and start talking about all the gadgets and um, whatnot. So um, can any of you uh, sh share the importance of uh, worship technology in, in, in ministry and worship ministry in general? Uh, would you say it's important? Um, yes, no, maybe. That question is for all of us. What? How? How? How important do you think sound uh, is? In, as in, and technology is important. Ministry, and then in our context, when it comes to worship ministry. Yes. Okay. All right, um, so here's the next question. Um, why is it important? Why is, yeah, Louis, go ahead. Well, uh, it depends because I have I have a friend that whether the music, the sound is good or bad, he knows how to worship. Um, but for excellency's sake, I, I think it's also important. But for worship's sake, um, we have to come to a place of we know how to worship, whether it's good or or bad. I'm not saying you should not go for excellence. But I'm saying that yeah. he, he taught me something mm -hmm. very different. Whether the sound was good or the sound was bad, he just knew how to connect and worship. You know, so he didn't disturb his flow of worship. So invariably, um, he comes from right. a place or he comes from an altar mm -hmm. that has worship. You know, so right. when we come into a corporate setting, um, whether it's um, good, whether it's bad, he just connects. He knows how to connect. Um, then, then some. It depends on if you put it from a pastoral point of view. There's so many pastors that um, with good sound, they they flow better. Mm. It helps with their grace and their anointing. Um, some other people sure. might just don't need the sound. Um, I know someone that the husband, when he's ministry, he likes sound. He likes he likes the noise. Then if it's the wife ministering, she doesn't like this, this, this thing, you know, but she just flows. So it depends on different people have different graces right. um, that helps them. Um, like the prophet said, I need a mistral. So it means for 
the prophetic word at that time needed in Israel. The Bible says David was skillful. Um, was handsome mm -hmm. and rude, but he was skillful on the half. So for different um different, but I just learned invariably that most times in the place you are going for excellence, you should not forget the, the the call of worship, even from a place of our heart to God. Right. Thank you, sir. Right. Yeah. Yeah, thanks, Louis. Um yeah, that, and thanks for explaining that so much and so well in detail. Yeah. Um Okay, Susan shares, uh, lyrics should be clear um, what they're singing. If it's a large congregation, whole church should be involved um, in worship. Yep. Okay, that helps. Uh, what, what else, I guess? Yeah, please talk to me. Uh, why do you think um, the sound and technology is important uh, for, uh, for a ministry, for a church ministry, and in our context, worship ministry? Feel free to unmute and speak. Uh, Christopher, would you like to uh, add anything as in just respond to that? What are your thoughts on sound and technology? Sir, a small thought. Yes, sound go ahead, Rupa. And technology is also made by God, and we, is, we are using it to enhance and worship Him with it so and it it makes it so beautiful this sound and when it is in harmony and in symphony it really brings alive our spirits in his presence it's very useful this one for all the co the right. whole congregation yes all right yeah thanks Thank for you. Me. yeah so I, yeah uh, I, anybody I, I, else Hello, can you hear me? Yes, go ahead, Christopher. Yeah, sorry. Um, no, I was just, um, I wanted to add that, um, you know, I think, um, you know, any 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 industry that, uh, you know, is uh, has to keep up with the times and, you know, mm -hmm. digital technology has, has, uh, has also evolved so much uh, over the years. So I think uh, it's um, it's important to have worship ministry also, you know, keep to uh, uh, you know keep in in um, in in line with you know the other other music industries that uh, that are uh, uh, you know that are using the latest technology. Um, so yeah. I mean, for example, if uh, worship ministry is is you know. Has not kept uh, kept up to that uh, kept up to you know uh, the times that um, I mean the current times and uh, and the technology technology that is used, uh, then right. um, people who hear it may may feel that you know it's not sounding as good as it sh it should. So uh, why right. not use the best and the latest technology for for worship ministry also? And that I, that's why I think it's very it's most important. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Uh, we're just keeping up with times, uh, keeping ourselves updated. Uh, uh, I think, right? Um, but also, I mean, uh, I think if 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 anything, if at all anything, uh, in the last two and a half years, uh, the church uh, has come has understood the importance of technology in general, right? O overall, because of the pandemic, isn't it? Uh, this whole online e-learning courses and online classes for Bible College was initiated um because because we were pushed to a corner and we wanted to we want, we had to improvise and um and thank god for technology uh it's made it possible for us to connect with so many beautiful people from all the different parts of the world isn't it uh, so there's technology involved uh so many things that goes into it uh, and then there's sound uh is also involved isn't it the clarity um so for us to understand each other it's for, um, it's one thing to connect, and it's another thing to just being able to um, be very clear in what you want to convey, isn't it? So um, that, in general, I think um, it, it's I would say it's very important. And so the another important it's 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 very important um, 
for for churches to understand the importance of it um especially most some of our churches um in india i mean uh we, do, we don't seem to have a budget uh, set aside for sound and technology. Um, investing in sound and technology has seemed like investing in a liability and not as an asset. Uh, you know, it's like, is it worth the investment? Uh, should we keep us? We should we have a budget to invest in a good sound equipment uh, and whatnot? Right. So that it's, uh, the, there's that kind of a mentality, uh, at least from the churches that I've, uh, you know, uh, come and grown up or seen as well. So, you know, we'll have to wait um, uh, for a while before we could get a gadget or because it seemed that it was not worth it. So um, that's the whole point of this, uh, this chapter, at least, is the importance of, uh, you know, the sound equipments, the technology, and why it's, uh, you know, uh, why we need to keep ourselves updated, right? But so here are some of the things that, uh, see, if you are absolutely have no idea about sound and technology, you're not technically savvy when it comes to uh, all of these equipments and uh, some of the gears that we will be talking, it's absolutely fine. Uh, okay, so don't get too overwhelmed by some of the technical words that might be used, uh, you know, in this session, but uh, but these are some of the basic things that you will have to keep in mind uh, if you're leading a worship ministry or if you're leading a ministry and you have a worship pastor under your supervision, uh, right? So just so you understand the language that is being used, right? So some of the terminologies uh, that will be used, uh, so you need to be aware of certain things. Yeah, that's very important. So um, there are many things to consider, but first thing uh, that we talk about, or that comes to mind, at least when we talk about sound, is the microphone, um, microphones, right? Um, so it, what it does is when you speak, your the volume is amplified, isn't it? So um, this is one of the examples of the microphone that you, that you are seeing uh, in the picture. Uh, it's from a brand called Shure, S-H-U-R-E, and the model number is SM58. Um, all right, so before I just, uh, uh, continue, I'll go ahead. Um, I wanted to also do something a little different in this class or this for this chapter is I also have my colleague, um, Rohit, uh, who we work together at APC. Uh, he, uh, he's, he's, uh, uh, sound head, so to speak. So he's in charge of all the sound and technology that goes behind it. And uh, if you are able to hear the live streaming uh, of our online services clearly, it's because of this dude. <laughs> um, so I thought I would have him over as for the session as well, uh, where he can add some of his insights, his thoughts. And if you have any questions, uh, you can also post it in the chat section. So we'll have like a and a kind of a session and uh, you know something kind of an impromptu kind of a class today. Yeah, I hope that's all right. Um, and so uh, we have the microphones. Uh, so very, very quickly, uh, Rohit, um, so what are some of the different kinds of microphones uh, that uh, you know one should be aware of like say, basic idea so what you see is sm58 that is that comes under what kind of category i know there are different categories of mics so uh, for the most part the i think the, the most common is a dynamic mic and a condenser mic so dynamic microphones are mostly used for vocals and a condenser mic is used for instruments instruments or if you're going to record vocals it'll have to be in a very controlled environment like a studio setting so you get very crisp clear vocals so the main difference uh, a condenser mic is more sensitive yeah so but those are the two broad categories that you will see anywhere anywhere you go so uh, one is the dynamic mic and the other is the condenser mic Right. Okay. So, uh, condenser mic. You, I mean, you say it. It cap. Uh, it's it's more easy for it to capture all the other sounds that's happening in the environment. Is that is that what it, it what it does? It's more it's more sensitive. Uh, it it picks up a lot more. There's a lot less rejection. A dynamic mic only picks up something that's close range, 
like a condenser would be you you could use it for like a choir use it like uh, you you would have seen mics used for cymbals so it picks up yeah. everything in that range but a dynamic mic anything anything uh, further than like a foot and and you'll probably lose it so the mic in the image is that's a dynamic mic it's it's yeah. very directional so you have to point it at the right direction so it picks up the sound is it is that it okay, okay. and yeah. a, a condenser is the one that okay all right cool um Right, so that's what a microphone is. We've all seen one. We've all used one. Uh, okay, and um, the other thing uh, uh, after the microphone to add to the sound um, arsenal, uh, so to speak, uh, is <laughs> is this uh, the mixer board or uh, mixer? Uh, you know, also known as uh, they come in all different shapes and sizes. Uh, you you would have seen these huge ones. Uh, um, in in big studios and concerts and whatnot, right? Christopher, I see that you raised your hand. Oh uh, uh, yes, no. I just want just a mic. I just want to, um, I guess confirm that you know the the, the mic that is used by, for example, the pastor when you know when he's doing the doing the sermon, or the one that's on on his, um, uh, you know, connected to his um, to his face. Uh, that would be a dynamic one. Is that correct? Uh, that's that's actually a condenser. That's a condenser with a, a, a unidirectional pickup pattern, so it doesn't pick up too much. Too much okay. But what's the reason why? Why you? Uh, I mean, you were just just now you mentioned that um, uh, a dynamic one is very focused on on the voice, so because it's very close to his his mouth. Wouldn't it be? Wouldn't it um, need to be a, a dynamic one? I'm you know, just just curious. Okay, so so condensers give you better clarity. So as you go further advanced in the chain, there are people who have made directional condensers as well. Because why not benefit from the extra clarity, right? So so that's that's one variant of a condenser. Okay, but okay. but you. but okay. as a baseline, that's why I said dynamics as a baseline are very yeah unidirectional and close range more importantly yeah okay thanks yeah yeah thanks christopher um yeah so the mixer board um is where you know all uh, you i mean you see a lot of instruments uh, on the stage for example you see at least three microphones three vocalists uh, drums uh, and the bass guitarist uh, electric guitarist acoustic guitarist keyboards and so there are at least say for let's say 10 of them on the stage right and uh, and and you see all wires going through their instruments and all these cables running on the stage and they all need to go somewhere and get connected, isn't it? Uh, so it's not just cables on the stage going behind the stage endlessly. And so all of those uh, cables uh, are routed to this uh, device uh, thing called a mixer. And, and this is where all your uh, this uh, the, your mics are connected, the instruments are connected, and whatnot, right? So and they come in different shapes and sizes, as mentioned. Um, you know it could uh, and they have different channels uh, channel numbers so for example the one that you see here it's i think a uh, 16 channel mixer that means uh, you can go up to you can connect up to 16 um, say it, it could either be a, a mix of microphones and uh, instruments um, is that right rohit uh, so that yeah so either either instruments or microphones depending on what the source is going to be yeah right okay uh, and yeah you also see in the image another smaller mixer there so uh again see it depends on the size of your congregation um also right um and and the, and the budget uh, that uh, that the church is willing to invest uh in a mixer board um so this is very uh, crucial very essential uh what so what this does is not just uh, it, it get, all the instruments are get connected are uh, getting connected to this uh, device but if you see all these knobs over here um, um, okay Rohit you want to explain just you know this uh, what these knobs do um, just from the small one so uh, like a basic mixer there has yeah uh, okay so primarily you will have your inputs so uh, either either a microphone or an instrument goes in there 
then you the next level would be you setting your signal strength so setting up setting up right. enough enough so it's heard because uh, uh, that will be like first stage of amplifying the signal that you get from the microphone so you have enough for the mixer to manipulate then uh, I, you have the equalizer which is used for tone shaping whatever source you have so a good reference of how how you want to how you want to tweak those knobs is how would it naturally sound like we know what our own voice sounds like or what an acoustic guitar would sound like so if through your speakers it does not sound like that then you use the equalizer you'll have maybe two two or three knobs in a small small format mixer you'll have uh, uh, multiple i mean uh, more complex ways to manipulate as you scale up but on a very basic level uh, your low frequencies mid frequencies and high frequencies so you tweak okay. them based on how how you know it should sound basically that's that's the okay. very base reference of how you manipulate that then uh, and then the volume knob so that's that's very bare okay. bones of power mixer every mixer would have these things yeah right yeah, thanks, Rohit. So, uh, okay, just uh, for clarity's sake, I mean, I'm, I'm not sure some of you have, uh, uh, what's that? I'm, I'm not sure if you gotten a little freaked out with the words or terms like a frequency and all of that. Uh, it's nothing, guys. So, so how many of you have, a, a, what is it, a music player at home? I'm sure most of you have like a, a, a music system at home. I mean, at least the days when I used to grow up, it, it looked, uh, you have these uh, the highs, the mids, and the lows. I mean, the the treble, the mid, and the bass. In other words, right? The treble. So, uh, and that's what basically what the mixer also does. Is and you can control the the treble, like how you know trebleish it you want it to sound, and how bassy you want the sound, uh, the song to sound. And that's what the mixer does. And um, in the image that you see, all these things here those are called as faders that you can increase the volume or decrease the volume by pushing it up and down um right and then you in this small mix that you see over here these three blue color ones uh knobs uh the top one is that is which increases or decreases the treble the high frequencies that sounds very uh screechy kind of thing uh, you know it controls that frequencies and then you have the mids and the lows the bass you can increase or decrease the bass it depends on how much you want because these are all just fyi okay and then this is basically what this mixing uh, console does okay that's what a mixer is um say i saw that you raised your hand you did you have a question yeah you've you've clarified it i, I just wanted to ask as basically in in summary you're saying this controls the output of whatever yes. sound you want to hear. OK, thank you. Correct, yes. And uh, it does a lot more uh, as well. Like it has effects like in this in this bigger mixer cons mixing console that you see. You see there are additional knobs over here. Uh, there, It has all these uh, effects such as uh, a reverb and delay. Like, for example, if you want delay, delay is uh, one of the effects that says, uh, how do, I, how do I demonstrate it? When you say hello, and then hello is repeated, like hello, 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 hello. That's a delay effect. <laughs> so, right, uh, you hear in all these, um, uh, at least in India, Bangalore or orchestras that plays in the, you know, on, <laughs> on the roads, and it's their favorite effects. Um, but anyway, so that's what a mixing console is. Uh, Abraham, I see. Uh, are we going to need another device attached to the mixer? Or we can, or we can just connect directly from the mixer and get the best sound. Um, I let Rohit re respond to that. Rohit, uh, bare bones, a basic setup, microphone to mixer, mixer to speaker. That's about it. But I think yeah. as you scale up, let's say you want to use multiple speakers, you'd have, let's say, a, a splitter of sorts. So there will be one more, one more device between your mixer and speaker. So that it splits to multiple speakers. Let's say you have you have a speaker outside your hall, one on this side, one on a balcony. You know, so that's one more thing that could come between. I mean, before it reaches the speaker. So mixer to a splitter or a speaker processor, and then the speaker. Yeah. Okay. All right. 
Thanks, Rohit. Uh, Abraham, what do you mean, a please to those online? Um, what? Yes, uh, I, yes. I just want to yeah. confirm that is it okay to connect from the mixer directly to uh, a, a laptop to those online, or you need a device so that you could at least get a correct sign for those online? Um, you can you can connect directly also, but the recommended uh, route would be to get an audio interface. Yeah, like a, like a two-channel audio interface. I think just later in the presentation, there's something about that as well it's for recording yeah. and stuff. So you take an output from this, go into that. It's it's basically it looks something like your setup box for your TVs or like a router, internet router goes into that a usb cable comes out and plugs into your computer and that goes to zoom or youtube depending on what you're doing okay so i just want to confirm that that is better than connecting Definitely. directly from the pc to the Definitely pc better. yes yes okay please what's the name of the device again please audio interface just if you google audio interface you'll get a lot of options a popular option yeah. is the scarlet scarlet two input interface Okay. okay. So um, this is what an interface looks like um, if you're you? especially using for uh, the online one, right? Uh, so um, for the most part, in the last semester, for all our supernatural hour, supernatural hour, um, just to have a clear sound. Um, so I had to have. Uh, wait, let me see if I can bring this mic also. So you see this mic over here. Um, this is. Uh, this is not a. It's like a condenser, but a less powerful condenser mic. Um, and so this mic and my keyboard would be connected to this. And from here, uh, it will go to my laptop. So um, yes, and so at the moment, we are still not talking about the online thing. So uh, <laughs> we, uh, we'll get to that in just a second, all right? Um, OK, so thank you. The, yeah. Thank you. Hey, you're welcome, Abraham. Yeah. Christopher, sorry, yeah, you have a question? Uh, yes, so, so uh, the person who's looking after this, uh, who's, who's handling the mixer, uh, would obviously be on, on headphones and, you know, listen to the music coming in. Um, and that would be one indication of, you know, how the, how the sound is coming across. And that would then, you know, trigger whether, you know, that person needs to start uh, fiddling around with the, with the knobs. So, but I also wanted to understand, you know, in this, in this uh, age of, of computerization, uh, one can it be done automatically? Uh, you know, which the, the computer is automatically going and you know doing uh, uh, tweaking the uh, treble and the the mid the mid and the and the bass. And also, is there any indication on this mixer which tells you uh, at what level it's coming? Uh, you know, what level is it? Uh, is a treble? Are there some lights? Uh, you know, that are that are being that are shown or whatever. I uh, just wanted to understand that. Uh, uh, besides just hearing the sound. Uh, is there any right. visual kind of representation of how the sound is coming across? So I'll just uh, respond and then let uh, Rohit, uh, uh, you know, add to it anything. So basically, as in in the basic mixers, mixing console that you see in the images, more, these these are on what are known as uh, analog mixers, right? Mm -hmm. So there are two kinds of mixers. One is the uh, just type you know, analog mixer um, and digital. Uh, um, digital mixer, right? So um, you, you guys need to know these things. Uh, and these will not have any kind of a signal, uh, I mean, that says, okay, this is what it's, it is at. It's just you controlling how much you want and increase or decrease, right? Um, and um, also the person who's controlling this will not always be on the headphones because if you're, let's say, uh, if I'm doing this, if I'm controlling this mixer for our church, uh, and if you've seen an APC, though he'll be standing in the middle of the congregation, and so he's his um, his input is also the main speakers. Like, how is it sounding in the entire room? What kind of sound is coming off the speakers? Um, and the person who's actually mixing this for online, um, you know, streaming thing, he sometimes will be listening for references on the headphones. Uh, but then, uh, Rohit, is there a device that automatically increases and decreases the treble stuff? Uh, okay, so um, 
I think what the the call that we are on right now is the best example of automated mixing. Yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> Google Google Meet uh, has an algorithm that uh, that does a little bit of volume control. It doesn't allow things to distort. You know, uh, it doesn't allow your voice to break. You know, things like that. It does. It has some AI mm -hmm. doing that. But audio mixers don't do that. Uh, the the best case scenario, uh, I mean, as far as automation has come, is uh, let's say you have twenty microphones and it's a it's a play, so so you can you can put it all through this one process software processor, and it controls levels, so you don't have to do the on off and push levels things like that. So, but that's the best case scenario so far. Yeah, multiple mics. You you do the tweaking. But the volume levels and making sure they're audible, it does by itself. So yeah. And uh, as far as visual representation, I don't know if you guys can see this, but uh, so let's see if you can see this. Uh, so that's like a real time. It's it's called an RTA analyzer. Yeah. So on digital mixers, you have that across. Basically, let's 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 dumb this down. So. You have your treble and your bass, and the in betweens are the mids. So you have like a waveform showing you spikes. So let, for to address the question, let's say if there's too much of treble, you'll see more spikes in that region. Yeah. So that's that's a visual representation of what what could be wrong or what you could tweak. What what is more? What is what is, what is, what you don't want? You can you can visually look at it and cut it. Right. When this is this something that's available only on a digital console, though. Yeah. Okay, so some uh, so that's uh, that can be visibly seen only on a digital mixer, right? Only on it has mixer. like an LCD screen on. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, so I think Christopher. So uh, it you know the digital mixer at least from what I've seen it has like a line uh, like a spectrum, and if if there's a frequency going way above, uh, you know that you know that okay that it, sh that it should not be at that certain frequency and so you'll bring that frequency down closer to that line or below the line and if you know if talking about the base or the low frequency uh it will usually be below that that line right uh, Rohit? and you could not necessarily go mm -hmm. so that's yeah. a visual uh i think signal so so uh, just yeah. just on the volume one uh so for example uh, you know on, on a guitar you have you know you have an option and the guitarist will be able to manage the sound on that, or rather bring it up and down. So, how does that kind of sync with the with the uh, with the mixer in the sense? Um, um, will it sort of balance each other? Um, yeah. So, so a bass line would be so even even a guitar like like you said would have bass, treble, and mid. So your starting point would be keep everything straight. So the twelve o'clock position is basically no changes. So you ask the guitarist to keep it at that position. Keep your volume at maybe twelve or two o'clock, and you start tweaking. If if for some reason uh, the instrument still doesn't sound good, then it's a combination of what he can help you out with and what you can do. So yeah, so sometimes it helps. It helps if you make some changes. I mean, well, as you get to know your instrument, you know that this uh, this knob helps it get a little better. This knob makes it sound fuller. This knob makes it sound brighter. Yeah. So as you get an idea of your instrument, you know if you cut this, the sound guy is going to get a better, better quality signal from you. So it's a, it's a trade-off. Yeah. Yeah, but who, who, in a sense, I mean, just an academic question now. Who's in control? I mean, you know, if when when it's a, in a in a kind of a real <laughs> professional kind of environment, um, the guitarist wants to basically, you know. Lower the volume to a very very uh, low low level, and um, uh, the mixer the mixer guy is 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 now sensing that it's too maybe too low for the audience. But the guitarist is by uh, you know I mean he has purposely uh, kept it at that level so that you know it will slowly build up. So uh, just want to show uh, I guess uh, it should be the guitarist right who's who's controlling it. Um, not really. So <laughs> uh, that's a battle that's been going on for decades. But <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say that. <laughs> uh, but uh, ideally, 
you you want to get an understand so here here's one more thing it's important to get build relationship with the worship team so they understand what you're right. trying to get at yeah so if 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 it's only their agenda or only your agenda then uh, then confusing questions like this will have to be addressed <laughs> and often yeah. go unaddressed yeah and and you don't exactly know what happened that day so <laughs> it's a, it's a it's a mix yeah. but but uh, primarily it's the audio guy that takes the call of what's heard outside yeah uh, as far as what he can hear like we have monitor speakers for them to hear themselves now that he can be the judge of how much he wants but uh, as far as what the audience hears whoever is at the mixing desk takes the call thank you yeah Thanks, Rohit. I think you mentioned a very important point there. The relationship, build that rapport between the musicians and the sound person. So I think uh, this I've seen a lot of friction in the past between these two, uh, isn't it? So one, the musicians complaining about the person at the sound mixing console and the mixing person at the mixing console saying, uh, "Hey, you're not singing loud enough. I can't give you, uh, you know, more than this because you're not." Uh, singing into the mic etc and stuff like that right so there's always been this battle for the decades uh but yeah uh, so that's the gist of uh, my mixing console guys and louis uh I see your question is it general principle for sound engineers to drive their sound so loud in small spaces or is it just bad mixing um it's just bad mixing i guess <laughs> it's <laughs> yeah cool uh, so let's move on so this is what uh, the back side of a mixing console looks like um, right so uh, this is the mixing console you see um, uh, a lot of channels that where you know the cables will be plugged in uh, it's for input right you, all you see uh, one of the important things here is the input that means uh, for example a mic one uh, say pastor's mic will go into one of these channels that's the input right and um where's the output here it's so there's a yeah wait, there's a major output, group output stereo output so uh the out is where another cable goes from this section into the speakers um so everything is connected over here so this is the real deal guys mixing console uh, if you don't have a mixing console and have all the microphones and uh, instruments it's yeah it's really no use okay um so in addition there are some more uh uh you know, gadgets or gear uh to make your sound a little better again okay, once again um these this is this is what is known as the equalizer that uh once you have a mixer uh it, and again, if you have the budget, uh, you know, to add to your gear, what an equalizer does is it refines the sound. Like it's it, that's basically what it is. Um, isn't that isn't what it does, uh, Rohit? Like it just re, it's refining, uh, tweaking, and making it more crystal clear kind of thing, isn't it? You get more detailed yeah. about the frequencies, the exact yeah. numbers, um, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Depending depending on the source, you tweak so that the tone sounds natural fuller yeah clarity primarily yeah okay yeah all right um so that's an equalizer um so uh guys just a couple a couple of minutes ago we I spoke about the frequencies right and also the visual uh thing uh, and i mentioned a line here right that a line that goes so um do you mind just uh very uh, in simple words, just explaining what this 32 is and, and all the 16K is. So which is uh, the high frequency and the low frequency? I mean, just... Uh, yeah, so... Um, sound that you can hear is from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. So that's basically what they've given here. Uh, and to simplify it to a mixer with just three knobs, the comparison would be let's say 30 the knob the knob that says 32 64 125 would be the lows 250 to 2k would be the mids and 4k to 16k would be the highs so yeah okay so 32 uh, hertz 64 hertz and 125 hertz uh, are your base frequencies basically isn't it so yeah, uh, yeah. The zero decibels. Uh, DB DB stands for decibels, guys. I'm sure you have heard somewhere in the science class, <laughs> right? Yeah. Frequencies and waves. Uh, 
so uh, you push it up and down it increases or decreases that particular frequency uh, and between 20, 250 and 1 uh, 2k right uh, is your mid uh, frequencies uh, and then the, from the 4k to 16k is your high frequencies that's the treble um, right and so yeah, the sound person the technician uh, will understand all of this how to control uh, you know which is which works best for the, a certain hall or a certain room and cut out those frequencies so that's what uh, an equalizer is all about right um, and 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 I think another important gear uh, is the amplifier, basically. Um, now, what an, what an, an amplifier does is, in simple terms, it just amplifies, uh, you know, the sound in, in this context, because we're talking in terms, in context of the sound. Uh, it takes, uh, say, a weak signal, a wave thing, and then it just makes it big. Uh, but so, uh, Rohit, so this is important, uh, isn't it? Um, I mean, you would need to have an amplifier uh, before it goes into the mixer. Uh, isn't that right? Uh, you need an amplifier before it goes to the speaker. It's it's between before the Before it goes mixer, to the speaker. Mixer, mixer to speaker has to go through an amplifier. So yeah. Either, so either either the amplifier is a separate unit or it's built into the speaker. So those are the two kinds of speakers you'll come up with. And they're called active and passive speakers. The active speakers has the amplifier baked into the speaker itself. And a passive speaker has it uh, has the amplifier as a separate unit and the speaker is a separate unit. Yeah, and it amplifies the sound so, into the speakers. So uh, there again, so just like there are two kinds of mics. The one is the dynamic mic and the condenser mic. There are two kinds of speakers, basically. I mean, for us to understand, so that is the active speakers and passive speakers. Is that right, uh, Rohit? Yeah. yeah. And so it's the active speakers that has an amplifier inbuilt. Yes, inbuilt, inbuilt so in the speaker. The speaker and the amplifier the speakers. Is one, one module, yeah. You okay. plug in a so you don't need to invest. Speaker. Yeah, it's just one module. Yeah. Okay. And pass if you're having passive speakers, I'm assuming the passive speakers are uh, more budget friendly. Yeah. So one amplifier, and and you can yeah. So with one amplifier, let's say initially you buy just two speakers, you can use the same amplifier and buy two more, and it would take care of that as well. Two more speakers, you mean? Yeah, two more speakers. Just two more speakers alone. So, so since the two modules are separate now, it would like let's say let's say be a third of the price cheaper, something like that. Right. Okay. So let's just uh, pause here, as in uh, do a quick recap of what we've just spoken about. So one is uh, all of us need to know what a microphone is. Like we all know what a microphone is and what it does. Um, and then we we just spoke about the mixing console, um, and then. Uh, the amplifier, I think, is um, is is it? Uh, I mean, in your opinion, do you think these three are like are the main in gadgets, important gadgets? Uh, you know, like the building blocks or the fundamental things that we need to invest in first, like yeah. speakers, yeah. amplifiers, and mixing console. Speakers, amplifier, mixer, microphone. Yeah, that's it. You can call it four things. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, all right okay okay uh, see i mean if you just start talking about this um uh, uh this topic i uh, don't want to continue uh, and now that we have only four minutes uh to the break i think we'll just kind of take a pause here and then uh, we'll take a quick 10 minutes break and we'll um, resume uh, is that okay uh, is, is this helping you, you all first of all um uh, everybody <laughs> uh the non-tech uh, guys, is it helpful? Uh, good to know information. What do you all think? Okay. Yes, Pastor. All right. Just... Please help. <laughs> all right. Hey, Mangi, you're a techie, isn't it? You, know, we, you can also have your add your inputs, bro. I didn't see you. <laughs> so. Awesome. Anyways, uh, we'll take a quick, uh, we'll take a ten-minute break, and uh, we'll resume from where we left off. Right.
Thanks.